Emergency! There's an outbreak of a vomiting bug on campus and environmental health officers suspect it's due to a contaminated water supply. You've been asked to help work out how badly the water supply is contaminated and also identify which bacteria are responsible so the best antibiotics can be administered right away. So how on earth can we identify bacterial species when their cells are only one or two micrometres across? These practicals are going to introduce you to a few different strategies that are used in labs across the world to do just that. There's quite a few different characteristics we can use, including morphology. Most bacteria are either rod-shaped or cockle-shaped. However, there are other morphologies which can be viewed under a microscope which can also help to identify the species. Cell structure. One of the most commonly used tests in microbiology is the gram stain tests, which allows you to tell the difference between two fundamentally different types of bacteria. There's gram-positive bacteria, which have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall and no outer membrane. Gram-negative bacteria have a lipopolysaccharide outer membrane and only a thin peptidoglycan layer. They react differently to the gram stain test and we'll do this test in practical too. Growth on differential media. You can grow bacteria on different types of media and this can help you work out which enzymes they contain. For example, you could add antibiotics to a media to select for different types of bacteria. For example, penicillin inhibits the growth of gram-positive bacteria. So if you get any growth on a plate containing penicillin, you know that you can't be dealing with a gram-positive species. You can also use chromogenic agar to help identify species. Chromogenic agars contain dyes that change colour in the presence of particular bacterial species. In the practical, we're going to use chromogenic UTI agar to identify coliform bacteria. Coliforms are rod-shaped bacteria that can ferment lactose, for which they need the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which cleaves lactose into glucose and galactose. This beta-galactosidase enzyme can also cleave a synthetic dye called red galactoside, which releases a pink-coloured molecule. Therefore, if we plate bacteria onto CUTI plates, we can use that to identify coliforms easily because the colour of the colony will change. This is going to be really useful for our contaminated water supply. Coliforms are abundant in the faeces of warm-blooded animals, so if we find any pink colonies on bacteria, then we know that there are coliforms, so there's likely to be sewage contamination of that water supply. However, to do any of these approaches, we're first of all going to have to learn how to culture bacteria in a safe and sterile way. You're going to learn how to use aseptic technique. It's really important to work in a sterile way because you don't want bacteria from the air or your skin to contaminate your experimental plates. And we'll give you training in how to do this. In practical one, you're going to set up three of the most common microbiology growth methods. You're going to set up some spread plates, some streak plates and some liquid cultures. In practical two, we'll find out what's grown in those different cultures and try and work out the source of the contamination. Before the practical, you need to read through the practical notes that are available online so that you've got a clear understanding of what we're going to be doing. There are also links to videos explaining aseptic technique and the serial dilution protocol on Canvas to help you out. You're also going to need to complete the pre-practical quizzes before you come to the lab. You are not going to be allowed to start practical work until you've done these quizzes. There are going to be two quizzes that you've got to do before the practical. The stage A, which you can do as many times as you like and will give you feedback on your answer so you can check whether you understand it. You've got to get 80% on stage A to unlock the stage B quiz. Stage B is the quiz that counts. You're only going to be able to take this quiz once and there's going to be no feedback on your answers. So you want to make sure you've got a really clear understanding of the practical before you take stage B. Both of those quizzes need to be taken before you attend the practical lab. They'll close at 12 o'clock on the day of your practical. So make sure you leave yourself enough time to get through both stage A and stage B. So looking forward to seeing you in the lab so we can find out what's in those contaminated water samples.